Hello everyone! Uh, this game comes as a suggestion from a subscriber, Yonitman, and uh, he suggested a game between, uh, how he put it, uh, original Tal versus Yugoslavian Tal. And I was very uh, impressed by his suggestion, uh, since I really enjoy games by Mikhail Tal, of course, and uh, but I also enjoy games by Dragoljub Velimirovic. Now, I don't know, some of you may remember, uh, some time ago, I think it was like two months ago, uh, I did a video on uh, one of Dragoljub Velimirovic's games and uh, in that video I also said a few words about him and uh, uh, I introduced him properly. So I will put a link to that video uh, in the description below, be sure to check it out as Dragoljub Velimirovic, uh, Serbian Grandmaster, in those days he was a Yugoslavian Grandmaster, was also known for his uh, fierce attacks and uh, great imagination over the board. So be sure to check that game out. Uh, but here we have a game from 1979 and here we have Really, an, an, an encounter of two Tals, uh, Mikhail Tal versus Dragoljub Velimirovic. And uh, when two attackers meet, uh, the, the end result is always, uh, especially if uh, you know one, uh, one of the attackers gets an inspiration, as uh, you, well a brilliant masterpiece. And uh, well, if two attackers meet, uh, it, it often favors the <laughs> the attacker who got the white pieces. So let's see this game. Uh, in this game, Tal has the white pieces, and he opens with c4, the English opening. Uh, we have c5, b uh, b3, and now knight to c6. Uh, bishop to b2, e5, we have g3, d6, uh, bishop to g2, and the bishop to e6. Knight to c3, queen to d7, uh, knight to f3, and now uh, Velimirovic goes for the immediate bishop to h3. Uh, he wants to get rid of uh, Tal's strong light square bishop. So bishop captures, queen captures, and knight to d5 by Tal. And here black uh, has a couple of options. He can, uh, well, the threat you have to prevent is of course knight to c7 check. So you could play rook to c8, stopping this. You could go queen, uh, queenside castle. Uh, but Velimirovic uh, retreats with the queen. Queen to d7 and uh, leave, leaves his options open. Maybe he would like to castle queen, uh, kingside. And uh, another thing, you're playing against Tal, you don't want to, you know, castle too early. So e3, uh, we have knight c to e7, and now knight back to c3. Uh, Tal likes Velimirovic's uh, knight on d7, kind of blocking his development. Uh, so knight to f6, we have castles by Tal, and now e4. Uh, Tal was definitely going to push d4 at some point, also rook e1 e4 was an idea. Uh, so Velimirovic prevents this. He plays uh, e4 and here uh, Tal plays knight to g5. Now what's the idea of knight to g5? Uh, well firstly, mm, it's, it, it's, uh, g5 is a very nice square of course. Uh, but uh, what do you do w when this knight gets attacked? Well you can go to h3, maybe remaneuver it to f4. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, we have d5, and here Tal plays c captures on d5. And you can't really capture this pawn, uh, even though you're attacking it three times. If you capture with uh, the f6 knight, then you're no longer defending the e4 pawn. Uh, and if you try capturing it with uh, the e7 pawn, then after knight captures, queen captures, you have bishop captures on f6, uh, pawn captures, and now knight to h3, knight is ready to jump to, to f4. And it's, uh, it's a better position for white, uh, black spawn structure is completely messed up, so... Uh, Velimirovic doesn't go for this. After Tal captured on d5, he immediately went for queen to f5, and it seems um, Tal's knight is pretty stranded there. Of course, you could defend it with f4 or h4, uh, but uh, the queen is blocking the knight's retreat to h3. Uh, but this was Tal's idea all along. Uh, when he played c captures on d5, he saw that after Velimirovic plays queen to f5, uh, he will play a move that can't really be calculated, but uh, it of course offers a very interesting game. So without even trying to save the drowning hippo, uh, Tal goes for knight captures on f7. And now you don't really have a option of declining this uh, very nice sacrifice. Your rook is attacked on h8, if you move the rook uh, you get knight to d6 check, uh, you lose the queen. Uh, so king captures on f7 and here Tal plays f3. So. Tal does have some compensation, but but not really any realistic uh, compensation. Uh, he has a nice bishop on b2, of course, the knight is very nice on c3. He's trying to open up the f-file, because the king is on f7, the queen is on f5. Uh, and Velimirovic plays knight e captures on d5. We have f captures on e4, attacking uh, the knight and the queen. And now 
the strongest move for black, Velimirovich plays at knight, captures on c3. First he attacks, stalls queen uh, on d1. So uh, bishop captures on c3 and now queen captures on e4. So okay, Tal did get uh, an open f file for his rook, he has a very nice bishop on c3, uh, but there is still no uh, real compensation um, for the piece. If Velimirovich will be able to play at any point bishop to e7 or bishop to d6 and get this rook into the game, uh, then his extra piece will really will really make a difference. So Tal doesn't allow this to happen. He plays queen to h5, the only move that really continues uh, the initiative. And now uh, you definitely don't want to play something like king to e7, allowing queen captures on c5 with check. Uh, you can't uh, block this with g6 because rook captures on f6 is coming. And the problem with queen to g6 is again queen to d5 check. The knight on f6 is still pinned. Uh, king e8, now comes queen captures on b7 and now Tal would definitely have uh, sufficient compensation for the piece. Uh, so after this queen to h5 check, king to e6, it's the only move, the strongest move that still uh, gives black the advantage. Uh, but... Uh, you know, you have a king on e6 against Tal, that's, if you want to call that an advantage, that's that's your call. Uh, queen to h3 by Tal. And what do you do here? Again, you have to do something against uh, as black. So, naturally your first uh, idea would be to block it with queen to g4, but this of course doesn't work, uh, because simply rook captures. Uh, removes the defender with check, you pick up the queen and white wins. So after queen to h3 check, again Velimirovich goes for the strongest move, king to d6. Now again, uh, Velimirovich only has to bring this rook into the game, hide the king, uh, develop this bishop and get the other rook into the game uh, and then he can really enjoy his extra piece. Uh, here uh, your king is on d6 as black, how do you continue the attack as white? Uh, well. There's really no clear way, but Tal finds one way. B4. He wants to open up uh, this C file some somehow. Uh, of course, Black will not capture this pawn, as you know. Th there's really no point in giving White another open file. Uh, so Vilimirovich goes for King to C7, ready to bring the, the rook into the game and hide the king. Uh, Tal goes Rook A to C1, simply putting a rook uh, on, on, on a file that will soon open. Uh, rook to C8, uh, countering. The, the c1 rook and now comes uh, rook to f5. So what's Tal's idea here? Again, Tal doesn't have any compens any real compensation for the piece. Vladimirovich almost got away safely with his king, uh, but he does have to make he does have to make a move. Uh, what's Tal's idea with rook to f5? Well, if you simply continue with your plan, for example, king to b8, uh, now you get this very annoying bishop to e5 check. And now you have to give up the exchange with rook to c7. Uh, because if you play rook to a8, then comes rook captures on f6. And uh, you can't capture the rook because queen captures uh, rook on c8 would be checkmate. So this uh, rook to f5 move by Tal, uh, a lot of poison to it. So queen to g4. Now Velimirovich wants to trade queens and start enjoying his extra piece. Uh, Tal goes bishop to e5 check, not allowing the king to escape first, we have king back to d7 and now queen to f1. Still uh, not allowing to trade queens of course, Tal wants to keep everything on the board and uh, Velimirovich still didn't uh, manage to develop the bishop uh, to, to get the h8 rook into the game. And here uh, a move that uh, would definitely blunt Tal's attack would be c4. You simply play c4, you don't allow the c-file to, to, be, to be, be open, and uh, then, then you slowly start developing your pieces, and uh, you, you might be able to survive this. But uh, Velimirovich in this position played queen to e4. And uh, by playing queen to e4, he thought, okay, I'll give Tal some material back, but at least I'll be able to survive the attack. Uh, idea being that if now Tal plays the expected bishop captures on f6, g captures and rook captures on f6, uh, simply bishop to e7, now you're, you've developed the bishop, rook, uh, rook is coming to f8, and all is well for black. Uh, but, unfortunately, Tal had an, a different idea. After this queen to e4 move, uh, Tal played rook to c4, now attacking the queen, and as you can see, the queen doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, only, only square available for the queen is this c6 square. So, queen to c6, uh, and now uh, Tal plays queen to h3. 
and uh, you should know that queen to h3 is far from the, the best move. For example, uh, white could seize the immediate advantage with bishop captures on f6. Uh, g captures, rook captures, attacking the queen, and uh, after the queen moves, queen d5, uh, now b captures on c5, and there are uh, so many threats here, white, uh, white definitely has the advantage, uh, you know, uh, regardless of being down a piece. Uh, rook to d4, a terrible threat of winning the queen, the rook is coming to f7, queen can come to f4. Uh, so many threats, black would not be able to defend this. But uh, Tal has a different idea. Uh, after this queen to c6 move, Tal plays queen to h3, and uh, this is uh, really how Tal plays chess. He simply gives you so many options uh, to, <laughs> to make a wrong move. And here, uh, like, like in many cases uh, when someone is threatening a discovery, when this rook's, rook moves, you know, it, all hell will break loose. Uh, the best thing to do is uh, to simply get the king uh, out of the attack. Simply king to d d8 and uh, black can still play this game. But unfortunately for Velimirovic, uh, he played queen to e6. And this queen to e6 move allowed Tal to create uh, a, a beautiful en ending uh, for this game. Uh, here, Tal finally played bishop captures on f6, we have g captures on f6, and uh, now comes uh, the, the beauty uh, of the game, rook to e4. And uh, this, is, uh, this is really uh, the only move that actually uh, allowed Tal to play this, to play this line, and uh, now you really don't have uh, anything to do here. Uh, if you move the queen, for example, queen captures uh, on e4, which is the obvious move, uh, now the queen is on e4, simply rook to e5, this comes with check, uh, you can't block check, so after the king moves, so let's say king c7, you simply capture the queen, uh, a rook and queen will beat uh, two rooks and the bishop. So after this uh, rook to e4 move, uh, Velimirovic saw that uh, there's no point in capturing, if you, if you move uh, the queen to any other square, you're simply gonna lose that queen, uh, so he played queen captures on a2, and now comes... Uh, uh, rook captures on c5 with check, and uh, it was in this position when Tal played rook captures on c5 that Dragoljub Velimirovic resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, as you can see, the king is in check. Uh, the rook, uh, this rook is controlling the entire c file, this rook is controlling the entire e file. So, king can only go to d8 or d6, and it doesn't really matter. If king to d8, then rook captures on d8, this will be checkmate. Uh, and if you play uh, King to, king to d6, then simply uh, rook to d4 check. And again, there's really nothing to do. Uh, you can block with the queen to prolong checkmate for one move, or you can go back to e7, and now queen to d7 is again checkmate. So, uh, uh, a brilliant game between uh, Mikhail Tal and Dragoljub Velimirovic, uh, you know, worthy of uh, worthy of everyone seeing it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, like I said, I do recommend you check out uh, Velimirovic's game. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description below. Uh, it's also it's also quite spectacular. It's you know it's not uh, any worse than than for example this one uh, that Tal won against him. So do check it out, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Asbek Rani for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you are all ready for my coverage of the 1960 World Chess Championship match between uh, Tal and Botvinnik. Uh, I probably will start uh, tomorrow with the first game, but uh, in case I don't, maybe maybe I will leave it uh, for le like Monday, uh, because I do have uh, I do have some tournament games coming up uh, on Saturday and on Sunday. So yeah. Uh, that, that's it, I do hope you enjoyed it, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.